Torno Graph. <laughs> so we initialize it by just saying we know what's up at S. Okay, so S is the starting point. So initially our value of x, of capital X, is just the singleton, and we compute its a value, or its distance to be zero, and the path is the empty path. Now what do we choose next? Well, what, how many edges are there in the frontier at this point? Two edges, right? We, there's the one that goes from S to V, and the one that goes from S to W. Which one minimizes the Dijkstra greedy criterion? S to V. Right. So when we compute this, in one case we get we get zero. So uh, so in one case we get zero plus one, and the other case we get zero plus four. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to advance using this edge. Okay. So that's our next set x. We include v. So what is going to be the a value that v gets? One, right? So zero plus one. The same thing that we minimized. So it's going to be one, and then the edge that we're going to remember is the edge that we advanced by. Okay, so we compute V's shortest path. The shortest path to V is just this one edge. So now how many the frontier? So now there's three edges, right? So we can either go from S. So remember, anything in the frontier is if you start in X, and in one hop you get outside of X. So we can do that by starting at S, going to W, or we can start at V and go to either W or T. Okay, so there's three options to advance the frontier. <laughs> Which one minimizes V to W? Right, so if we use S to W, it's going to be 0 plus 4. If we use V to T, it's going to be 1 plus 6. And the sweet spot is using V to W, which is 1 plus 2. That gives us a 3. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to advance using this edge, which gives us this moat, and W gets labeled with a 3. Okay? And the shortest path we've computed from S to W is through V. And so now, now the final step, you know, I hope it's, uh, what's the final step? So how many things in the frontier now? Right, we, we need to get to T, that's the only thing left to suck up. And we can either do it via V or via W. Which one's better? Via W. Right, because here the comparison is either 1 plus 6 if we go via V, or 3 plus 3 if we go via W. Okay? So in the final step, so now the moat becomes everything, and we use this edge and we label this with a 6. Okay? So that's how Dijkstra works on this particular graph. This is how Dijkstra works in general. Again, I'm not going to tell you today how to implement it. Next week, I'll give you a very slick implementation using heaps, and it will be almost linear time. Okay, so this is effectively properly implemented, a for free, a for free primitive. Today, I want to focus on correctness. Uh, in terms of just clarity on the board, yeah. A W star equals in the here. Yeah. yeah. Where do you start? Yeah, I always debate this, um, because basically here I was using VW as a dummy variable. So, right, so the point is when you're minimizing, there might be 12 edges that cross the frontier. So I'm using VW as, a, as just a, a generic name for one of those 12 edges that cross the frontier. For the special one, which makes that as small as possible, I'm giving that a special name, V star W star. Um, w, but you have just the two edges, S, D, and then W. Yeah. Okay. Say that again, sorry? So I'm just, just wondering where the V comes in. Like, they're ready, so, like, for V of W. Like you mean here? Yeah. And so, in code, here's how I'm... I think you mean W in your example. Oh, this is different. Okay, so if you prefer to make this X and Y. Like, where does that Say what? Where does that B array come from? Like, we have the B array. Yeah. Yeah, so the B array we're just going to maintain. So the A and B arrays have like totally the same function. They're really kind of redundant, actually, as we'll see next week. So for both A and B, the indices are all the possible destinations. So there's an entry for every vertex. And in one of the, in one of the arrays, you're just keeping track of a number. 
All right, so I didn't talk about the B array. So basically, so that's probably your question. So how do the A and B arrays get populated in this example? Okay, that's a fair question. So basically, in the, array, in the A array, for S, we're going to have 0. Here, we're going to have 1. Here, we're going to have 3. Here, we're going to have 6. So the red numbers correspond to the entries of the A array. For the B array, the B is supposed to contain paths. Okay? So the short paths whose lengths correspond to the number in the A array. And so for, for in B, there's going to be the empty path for S. For X, there's going to be the path which is just this edge. For Y, there's going to be the path which is that edge and that edge. And for T, there's going to be the path which is all three of these edges concatenated together. And the assertion, which I'll plan prove to you in general, is that those are in fact shortest paths from S to all those different destinations. Now, of course, you can imagine a different graph where you don't just get one long path. Well, basically, the, you, know, you know, use separate paths to get to this part of the graph and this part of the graph. Here, it turns out all of the paths are subpaths of each other. But that's obviously not going to be true in general. Okay, other questions? Yeah. Is there any way to make it so that you can easily calculate the values from, we'll say, point P to the point S? Uh, say that again? Instead of starting from node S, we want to start from node T. Right. Is there a way to, to quickly recalculate the values? Well, given that you've done it from S. Already, you mean? Yeah. Good question. Very good question. Um, very good question. Very good question. Um, it can be difficult. So especially if you're just doing two computations, they can be largely unrelated to each other. Um, that said, there are some tricks. If you're doing repeated shortest path, uh, computations from different origins and different destinations. There's actually a, it's actually a really interesting problem, and as you can imagine, you know Google Google Maps has to think about this hard, you know, when they when they want to uh, do this. And so there's it's, it's, there's sort of so much I could say, I'm going to say nothing. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, there's a lot of deep theory and interesting engineering in how you reuse work from different shortest path computations. Sometimes giving up a little bit on having exactly shortest paths. So maybe you'd be within 5% of a shortest path, but there then there's some how more redundancy you can leverage between different shortest path computations. Yeah, really good question. Yeah. Do you have a destination in mind? Yeah. Do you do better than going at, looking at the whole graph? Um, another good question, right? So what if you don't care about um, finding shortest path to all other n minus 1 nodes, which is one in particular? I mean, the obvious thing you can do, and as we do this proof of correctness, it'll be obvious that it works, is you can run Bikestra and stop as soon as it, it gets to the node that you care about. Okay, so that doesn't mean it's especially tailored to that node. It means if you get lucky and find the destination early, you can go ahead and stop early. And again, think about the correctness proof I'm about to give you and understand why that assertion is justified. Beyond that, it's hard to... Uh, I mean, there are some tricks you can put in practice, but it's hard to say anything very general about how to optimize for a particular destination. The reason being is, for, you know, if your destination is all the way at the other side of the graph, intuitively speaking, it's almost like you have to compute shortest path to all the intermediate stops in order to compute the correct shortest path all the way out there. Because like, if you're using anything suboptimal along the way, it's not going to be an optimal path to the other end of the graph. So in some sense, for a worst case destination, you more or less have to compute uh, all of these sort of different sub-problems along the way.